today you will learn how to create this ice breaking, ice cracking effect in Blender, really simple and really easy. And you can use it to crack anything that you want. So basically there are two ways that I will show you today and how I like to use it. The second way is for me is a little bit more fun and you can do a little bit more things easier. But the first way is important to understand the second way because uh, it's all the fundamentals there. So we will start with the cube. I will press S and Z and scale it down like we have some kind of an ice plane and I will go with S and scale it everything a little bit more up. So basically this is the portion of ice. And in order to break this, we need to go to edit, preferences and enable the Blender default plugin. It's called Cell Fracture. So you can just type Fracture and you will see Cell Fracture. Just enable it, go here and say, say Preferences and you, is, you will always have it. And this works like, like this. It's an object, quick effects, and it's right here, Cell Fracture. This is, it looks like there are too many things, but it's really simple and easy. You can use particles, you can use vertices, you can use child particles and annotation pen. Basically what I will use, I will use particles and annotation pen, two ways how you can make these cracks and all these effects, so source limit, how many of these cracks you want to have and uh, noise maybe or recursion if you want to apply the cracks and then over the top even smaller cracks and so on and so forth, but it's really simple and easy. And let's go through that. In order to use this, we need to use particles for the first method. It maybe looks like Oh, particles, that's too complicated, but no, it's really simple. So we need to just go to the particles here, just add plus, add particle system, and you can see the particle right there. Here, you can set the numbers of particles, different seed, you will see that in a moment. And we have start frame, it's zero, 01, and end frame is 200. That means if, if we press play, this will go and emit the particles, and you can do a lot of things with that until it reached frame 200, then it will stop, let me show you and it's stopping. All right, but we don't want that. We want everything to happen in the first frame. So for the end, we will press one and everything is here, beautiful. And you can set the amount of these particles and you can set the seed. It's basically randomness, however you want. It doesn't matter, the seed here, you can set whatever you want. So one more thing that we want to change is go to the source and instead of faces, we want to emit from the volume itself. So, wow, like that. And you can uncheck even distribution to have a little bit more random things inside. That's all, really simple and easy. All right, now what we can do, we can go to object, quick effects, cell fracture, and just, we can apply it as it is. Just press okay by default and it will do the job. Let me show you, just okay, perfect. And it makes all these cracks right there. Really simple and easy. If you want to have cracks more towards the center actually where the cursor is, you can undo it, go back, and again, cell fracture, and just select this cursor close, right? And press OK. And see, it will have more concentrated here where the cursor is. Let's leave like that for the start, no problem. Now that we have all of these cracks, I can press M on a keyboard to add a new collection, and I will call this Ice Fracture. Like that, it doesn't matter. The point is that it's in own collection and that's what we want. Okay, now if we hide the collection, we are still left with this original plane and actually cube, it's not plane. We will name it ice, ice cube, doesn't matter. And we have its own particles. We don't need any more these particles. We can just delete it, minus, and that's it. We can hide this cube and reveal the cracks here, perfect. If you go right click and select objects, you will select all the cracks. That's the beauty of having it in your own group or collection. And now we need to transform this into a rigid body to add the physics. Simple and easy. Just go again, object and go to rigid body above the quick effects, rigid body and add active. What did, 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 did what is, what this does is basically adding physics like uh, gravity and all other things to this. And it's right there in the rigid body. If we select with shift any of these, you can see it's active. The mass of each piece here is one kilo. You can set whatever you want and all other things. If we press play, it will just fall down because, oh, bye bye, because uh, we don't have a floor to put it on. So we need a floor. For that, let's reuse the ice cube here, the original one. So select the ice cube, go to the front view by pressing one on the keyboard, press G and Z, 
Z to move it down. By the way, you have what I'm pressing here on the screen so you can check it out and move it a little bit down, up, whatever you want. So like that. And you can make it bigger S and instead of scaling on all three axes, we will press shift Z and we will not scale on Z axis, just on Y and X like, like this. So it's a little bit bigger, right? And now if we press play again, it will fall through this. Why? Well, because we need to add properties to the plane. So we need again rigid body, but instead of active, we need passive, obviously. That's perfect. And uh, we can just set the shape from convex hull to mesh. Okay, and if we press play now, that's it. It's staying there, see? It's a little bit going up because we need to move this a little bit down. So G, Z, a little bit down. Let's see, play. Perfect. Now it's perfect. It's almost. A little bit up. So a little bit more down. GZ. Just nudge it a little bit down. And now it's okay. Let's see. Yeah. It's it's almost. It's a little bit more down. Like that. Yeah. Now it's okay. So this is it. These, these are the basics. Now we need an object that will interact with these cracks. That will move the cracks up. Like submarine. So you can use any model. But to make the thing simple to understand what this is doing, I will use the sphere. In my case, yeah, I don't want to put the sphere there. I want it in center. So shift S and cursor to word origin. So come on, like this. And now shift A and add a sphere and it's right there. So we need to animate the sphere. By the way, uh, you can hide this. You don't need to have this like that. You can just go and hide it from rendering from you and no problem, it will still work fine. No problem at all. And I will go with the sphere, go with the GZ and move it below the eyes like here and just press I on a keyboard and insert the keyframe for location. So I want this location on frame one and maybe on frame 40, I will go with GZ and move it up where the submarine will emerge from the ice and water here, press I and another frame for location. So this is it. It's still not doing anything because we need again to set a property for this. So again, go here rigid body, set active and instead of dynamic, set animated and you can set, I know, one ton, 1000 kilo, whatever. So now look this magic. If you press play, wow, it's perfect. It's going out and we can go like this and press play and yeah, see, it's going on. So these are the basic, this is how it's done. Also, what you can do is reveal the ice cube, this, this holder now, and let's go back here and you can let me show you. Go to the top view, go to the face edit and select just top face. Press I to inset this top face a little bit here. Okay. And then Alt and select the frame around. Press E to extrude it and add like kind of a frame around to hold everything together. In some cases, the eyes will go and stretch uh, all around. So if you want to stay in place, you can add this holder. No problem. You can hide this. And still, if you press play, it works perfectly. Another thing that you can do is to select some of these with shift. I'm holding shift and just select some of these cracks and maybe a little bit more here. I know random. All right. And you can go to the object and rigid body and add passive. So these will be passive and you can also press M and name this passive ice or passive fracture, whatever you want, however you want to name it. That's because we can easier select both active or passive. And now if you press play, this will definitely stay in place. Only the middle thing will go out. This is my original scene. And let me show you how you can use a notation pen to create cell fracture. So select the notation pen and just go, not here, but go to, instead of 3D cursor, go to surface and just draw on the surface, something like this, like a spider web shape. And then go and use again cell fracture and instead of own particles, select annotation pencil, close to cursor and basically set OK. And this is it. It's a little bit different. I prefer this method more because I have more control over the size of the particles, actually fractures, and I'm not using the particle system. So now that we have this, I'm doing exactly the same thing that I did in the first method create that holder, add a rigid body and add a submarine. The whole submarine is rigid body and it's active and it's animated. So this is how it looks. 
Now that you understand the basics and know the principles behind breaking things in Blender using a self fracture plugin, let me show you the second method, which is my favorite and which I use to create my submarine breaking the ice animation. And it's by using the RBD Lab plugin, which is a time saver, which has a lot of other spices over the top to add more realism to the scene. I will show you really quickly. And if you want to get a copy or just check it out, you have the link down there in the description. It goes like this. You can see the panel of the plugin is on the right side and I'm starting with the first module, it's called Fracture. And basically I'm going down there to prepare using a notation pen and same like before, I'm creating that kind of spider web or maybe like a broken glass pattern, something like that. So this is what I like. Now I just need to go here to the Fracture and choose a notation panel, set Fracture and in a matter of part of a second I have these fractures and it's amazing. I can add extra details, I can fix if I have some issues like that with auto fix option and also I can select based on color. So these fractures are now automatically added to a new collection and this is really cool. Okay, now I, if I'm happy with the result I can set the apply and that's it. I can also add the ground and I can add a rigid body with one press of button and here is how it looks. Now I can select the passive elements that I don't want them to be movable like before and just with one press of the button I can make them passive. So here and they are automatically colorized so we can easily select them and now we press the play to, to show the animation and these are passive, these are not moving and everything else is moving. I really like the result. Now there are a few other modules in between but I will go straight to bake because I want to bake animation to keyframes because that will help me later to go to playback much faster. And uh, yeah, there is a warning that uh, says that it's really cool if you want to save this file before baking it. Now when you bake it you can see how fast you can scroll through a timeline and have everything really nice and smooth. Now I'm selecting the parts that I want to add a dust. Uh, particles to actually debris first and then I will add us. So all these particles that are selected will also emit some kind of a debris and you just need to select this and basically uh, go to the plugin and select debris and just go here and use selected chunks and create debris. Really simple and easy. It will again colorize to its own color and you can set so many options here and play with the different settings to add the desired amount of debris and also how you want the debris to behave. In the same way I'm adding the dust particles and the beauty of adding these particles is that you can control the size, the amount, the physics and everything and when I'm happy with the result like I am here I will go and add some smoke elements and also smoke elements just follow the steps, the buttons that are there in the panel of plugin and the beauty of the smoke is that again you can set different behavior of the smoke to be more dense, less dense, different color, a heavier smoke or lighter smoke or whatever. There are so many options there that you can just press with press of the button change and this is what I like and by tweaking the color of the smoke and other settings I have this as a final result. By the way, camera shaking and snow falling I added later in post-production. And now if you want to learn how to create your own submarine from scratch, check out this video. See you there. Bye bye.